If you're watching OTBAM live this morning on YouTube, welcome along. Uh, delighted to have you wherever you are. YouTube tends to be the place that most people jump on to uh, drop their comments in on. Engagement is huge, I think is what the um, Gen Z would say about um, about our YouTube channel. Uh, we are Ireland's home of debate. We've got analysis, breaking sports news and reaction as well, and live every morning, as you know by now, from half past seven. And if you are new, though, do subscribe, or indeed, if you've been chugging along there for the last couple of years, just jumping in every morning, hit subscribe. It's much easier because uh, we'll hit you up then with the best stuff. We'll let you know when it's happening and you can hit the notification bell as well. And if you're not new and you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? 121, uh, 123,000 people on uh, and others have hit subscribe. Good morning, Alan Quinlan. Morning, lads. How are you? How's your Irish? I was uh, hoping you wouldn't ask me that. It's brutal. <laughs> Well, I'm not able to ask you through Irish, so at least that's a saving grace for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, Come here, we've it's been, really poor now. We've been talking a little bit over the last uh, couple of weeks about Ireland style. Paul O'Connell has been on having a conversation about it. Brian Driscoll has touched on it and others as well. Um, about Ireland's style generally, where it's at, what it should be like, what sort of a system we should put in place. What? Um, how would you describe to somebody who lands down from planet Jupiter about what Ireland's rugby style actually is? It's a tricky one, I think. Um, <coughs> if you go back to probably our style under Joe Schmidt, it was um, it was very much a possession-based game where we put a massive emphasis on holding on to the ball, keeping it for long periods of time, and then kicking really accurately and putting pressure on the opposition. Um, it was simple. It was incredibly effective. And it wore, wore the opposition out. I was looking at st some stuff last night about about this, and I found an article from a couple of articles. Uh, John Barkley, the, the Scotland captain in 2018, he did um, he did some press before that that four, four Six Nations game. Ireland started off beating France, Wales. Remember the famous Johnny Sexton one in Paris to beat France, Wales, yeah. Italy. Set themselves up in a good position at Scotland in that fourth game. And we were starting to believe maybe that he would get four out of four and maybe head to Twickenham for, for a Grand Slam decider, Triple Crown um, and all that on the line. And I was looking back at some of the stuff that John Barkley said, because, you know, sometimes it's hard to identify exactly how a team are playing and what their their structure is. Um, lots of the modern teams will have your one three three one scenario with your forwards in phase play mm. if that makes sense so it's it's about when when the game opens up a little bit not off uh, scrum or line out that you what are you going to do with your forwards what's your shape and attack um what's your structure when when the game goes into multi-phase and you know lots of teams will keep two loose forwards out the edge and then the other six forwards they'll have them in two pods in around the middle working that kind of channel straight up and down the field uh, being options to carry, um, to, to to have little tip-ons to go behind that for, that forward pod, and just trying to resource the ball. So um, the game has changed so much in the last number of years that you know I remember a time when I started playing professional rugby that the quicker you got from a line out or a scrum, and you were sprinting across the field to a breakdown, and you you were <laughs> the ball was coming back against you as you were sprinting over there, you know. Mm -hmm. So there was always there was an old emphasis on the forwards recycled the ball, the backs just stood out there and looked for space. But you know, the game has changed so much now and everybody's more skillful, everybody is more uh technically better at the breakdown, you know. So there's there's anytime anybody carries a ball there's a danger that if 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 somebody's not in there, the old scenario of just the seven or or maybe the six would poach the ball on you. Everybody's trying to poach mm -hmm. the ball. So I think it's changed a lot off phase. So w what would I say Ireland style is? Well, look, we can play like South Africa, which is pressure, power, physicality, um, and keeping it pretty simple um, until you get options for loads of space and you put it through the hands and you score, score with your wingers. Some teams... Look at Japan. It's just move the ball, move the ball, move the ball continuously. Um, so Ireland's style has been a mixture of mm. 
power and trying to be evasive and keep keep the ball alive. Um, and sometimes we get caught between the two. Yeah. And that, that's probably been an issue in the last cu- couple of years where we kick a lot, we have a lot of one-out runners, um, and then when we move the ball at times, it's probably not on. So we've there's there's been a bit of a a kind of a confusion. If mm. if you want to create something that my, my vision and idea for for Irish Irish teams would be, of course you need the the bit of grunt and the bit of uh, doggedness and put the ball up the jersey and maul and keep it simple at times, particularly in wet, windy mm. conditions throughout the winter. Um, but I'd love to see more of an emphasis on um, how do we find space? How do we break down the opposition? On, on that, Quinny, um, right? What, so much conversation over the last couple of years about the Irish football style, right, and the personality, and how much of that is predicated on the manager that's there, and if he leaves, we'll be able to continue that, and can we introduce that at, at an underage level and then seed it out to all the senior levels? If you were to get David Nusifor's gig in the morning and you were to go in there, is that something that's viable in a rugby context like everything you've just described there is Ireland following the trends of what other nations are doing so is it viable for us to introduce a personality of play for Irish rugby at underage levels and let that seed all the way through to senior representative rugby at provincial international level yeah look I I suppose before I answer that under Joe Schmidt, it was incredibly effective. And it wasn't just doggedness and kick the ball and one-out runners. It was lots of strike plays and ingenuity and the opposition, just no matter how good they were. And the results proved that. Were but the, po- the point on that, Quinny, the po- sorry, to live with it. sorry to cut across you, the point on that, right, is that that was Joe Schmidt coming in and deciding here's what we're going Correct, to play, yeah. right? But okay. what I'm saying is, structurally, underneath all of that, is there somebody deciding that Irish rugby's personality is going to be X? And, like, is that a viable yeah. thing, or are we too... Is is the game at the elite level too... Um, is, is it is it not possible to bring in a system like that because ultimately New Zealand are going to pivot to play slightly differently and we've got to follow that or South Africa, etc. Yeah, well, look, it's it's um, if I if I got the job next year, right, and I won't and I won't be applying for it and I won't be qualified enough for it, m- my vision and my thought process, and I always had this as a player and I probably drove coaches demented who could coach me. Um, at times I was very... F- kind of <coughs> again against the structure of playing four or five phases and then we can play what's in front of us. There's a certain amount of structure you need. You you can't just go off a line out and say, well, the fly half will have a look and see see what the opposition are doing and just spin it out to the wingers if we if we get enough time. There's you know there's times where you know you're gonna punch up your twelve, you're gonna play a forward um pod around the corner, you're gonna try and exhaust the opposition and get them to move around a bit um maybe come back in field with another pot or two and then maybe try and go to the wings there's, there's, you would always have to have that kind of structure but i always believed and it's the way you know you hear <laughs> the word philosophy and what your belief is and philosophy as a player or a coach i always believe that and sometimes i see the irish provinces and i see maybe the irish team um we play some of these kind of uh, structured moves to build phases, and we play them as if we're, as if we're just going through the motion. We're going through the system rather than trying to make a line break off the first phase. Um, and I think it's a me- sometimes, and maybe I'm wrong. I'm open to, to criticism here or correction, but it, it's kind of in my underage structure and my coaching all the way through. There was huge emphasis on scrum, line-out, breakdown, defence, physicality, and not enough emphasis on catch-pass, catch-pass, catch-pass. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that we never did catch-pass. Of course we did. And we, I probably saw a, a big difference when Tony McGahan took over as head coach in Munster. And even when he was doing skills and defence with us, we were doing lots of little rugby lo- league plays and um, little... Uh, plays out out in the backfield with with uh, with certain backs where you know you'd hang behind the outside center and he he'd be chatting to you about doing little switches little little pivotal plays and stuff like that um but it it wasn't natural to to us as a group 
So if I took the job and I was involved, I'd say what 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 I'd love to see is right down to the grassroots structure is way more emphasis on catch pass, catch pass, catch pass skills and realignment. A lot of times I see it, even in the professional teams, I see the alignment after multi-phase gets flat, um, gets static. Um, and I think, of course, there's, there's high quality coaching going on in all the provinces and there's top quality players. And, and this isn't an issue, a major issue with the, you know, the catch pass stuff or the, or the realignment, but at times we see it and you see some players who are just not naturally um, happy and uh, with evasion. And of course they can pass, but under pressure, it's not just part of their, their mentality. You know, someone like Rua Tapoki, who I played with Munster when he came in, he changed the way we played. Mm. Lafimi Maffi, um, not necessarily Doug Howlett, because Doug was a winger and he was, of course, he was, he was a finisher. But Mafia and Taboki, I'm talking about that mentality where they want people around them to run with them, to attack, to be evasive, to, to have that ambition to run at the op- opposition. And that comes from New Zealand where the kids there are always encouraged to pass, to catch, to run, to take on the opposition. And look, the game is dictated um, the, the changes in, in the modern game have dictated ha, have dictated a lot of robotic style rugby that we see. Every co- every sy- team system has a massive defensive coach or system, which trying tries to break down the opposition. So, you know, off first phase, if you just run and, and think you're going to go through people all the time, it doesn't work, and you break mm. down and you make mistakes. And international rugby kind of. The stats and facts show that if you play around with your with the ball in, in your own half too much, you're going to get punished, turned over, turned turned over, make mistakes. The opposition are going to kick penalties. You lose the game. So it's a real catch twenty two about style. Well, well, but I think if if, if if you think about it this way, Quinny, right? If you if you come at it this way, looking at the four provinces, there are such a different, such a contrast of styles of play, right? Particularly at the two that have been factually the most successful over the last number of years there's a big contrast in what you would describe as or what I would describe as a philosophy of play there so is it is it ultimately impossible to go to those provinces if you're the next David Nussifor and say forget about everything that's gone before we're now going to play this way is that just bunkum ultimately is that not doable no I, I think I think with professional teams you can't go in and tell them well we have to play this way you have like the coaches decide what way they play and it, 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 sometimes it comes down to personnel Every team is not going to have a mafia and a Topoki in their centres, um, you know. So it's it it depends, and it has to be horses for courses. Weather dictates this. But what I would say is, I would love to see more of an emphasis uh, and um, a grassroots rugby of, and a lot of them are probably doing this anyway. But how do the coaches who are coaching kids throughout rugby in Ireland? really put more emphasis on the skills, continuous work on skills, bring it into the warm-up, have kids do, doing it on their own in pairs of two, twos in their warm-ups and stuff like that, even after training, give them little exercise to do when they go home with the ball, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And it is probably done, so don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this isn't being done, but it's just, we always say it about New Zealand, don't we, in Australia? It's just continuous. We We, we look at those teams and we think, their skills are just unbelievable at times. And I think the Irish players can become more skillful and more comfortable in that in that role. There is no possible way that you can turn up in an international match and think you're going to run around the opposition. That doesn't happen. Even against, you know, we saw Georgia last year in the Nations Cup. You have to earn the right to go wide. Um, but changing the mentality gradually in the All-Ireland League, in the representative teams. And I think Leinster probably... They're more recognised as a, an attacking force. And, you know, even when we played them in the late 90s, early 2000s, it was always, how do we stop the Leinster backline? Well, we stopped the supply, the source from the ball, because it was always the mentality of move the ball, move the ball. Traditionally, Munster were more dogged, more forceful. So that, that stuff doesn't have to change. But I mean, just changing the mentality and the skill sets of players. Even... You know, you see some of the games I saw last weekend for all for all the four provinces. You know, alignment skills stuff weren't 100. percent 
Um, and that's understandable. It's early season stuff, but it's just about changing that mentality. And what you do then, Adrian, is, is and it, again, it's, it's, a lot of this stuff is probably happening, but how do we coach the coaches in all the clubs around Ireland on Sunday morning, the grassroots stuff, to really, for them to understand the quality of the catch pass, the realignment, little switch plays, and getting young kids way more naturally uh, natural. Like some ki- some people are just real natural footballers. Look mm-hmm. at someone like Caelan Doris. He's a footballer. He's an evasive runner. He's an offloader. That He wasn't just coached into that. It's natural. So some guys are a bit more direct and probably don't have the same confidence. But I just think if we put more emphasis on that. So if I was coming in as, as director of rugby, I'd be saying, how do I get all the teams and people underneath me to really focus on more. I tell them my template, I want them to try and improve the skills and really, really focus on perfection around alignment. Lines are running, catch passing. And then as you develop over the years, I listened to Paul about this and, and we always chatted about, you know, line out and scrums and breakdown stuff, they're technical things that you can get better at. And usually you can kind of, if you understand lifting and line out and positioning and jump and all that stuff it comes pretty quickly to guys who maybe not be line out experts or are really good in line outs so you can improve that stuff very quickly with the natural kind of ability to to try and put a bit of evasion and and like it's i just want to reiterate this point this is something that is happening so it's not a case of you know throughout my career we didn't work and catch faster skills but i just think Mentally, we need to change the approach to try and really get brilliant as as um, all that kind of stuff. And then that kind of gradually it will improve the kids coming mm. through. And, and hopefully then when they get to that level, the kind of natural one-out pass or flick or offload or stuff, they don't have to think about it. It's not out of their comfort zone. So maybe that will help. And the style of game we, we, we want to play, I would say, is of course loads of the you know, the execution and the accuracy that Joe brought and brought incredible success for five five years. Championships, Grand Slams, you know, beating New Zealand twice. That stuff can, is was phenomenal. Um, and loads of brilliant tries with, with, with those strike plays. But just when the game opens up to seven or eight, ten phases, what are my forwards doing? How comfortable are they running? How comfortable are they being a scrum half, giving a 20-yard pass, all that kind of stuff, just trying to continuously improve the skill. So it does happen. And mo- most of the top-level players can do that stuff. But there are certain guys who just look like they'd rather run hard with the ball. Um, and and it, we've become a little bit robotic, not yeah. just not just in Ireland, in a lot of the modern-day teams. D- this, this seems like a conversation that we have at the end of every World Cup quarterfinal defeat that Ireland have about how do we increase the playing pool, how do we increase the, the skill set, how, how do we tap into to areas of Ireland that perhaps aren't traditionally rugby playing? How do you get the rugby ball into to more people's hands at a younger age? And I guess that kind of is a contrast with this week, for example, if we talk about the women's game. And there's, there's been a criticism of the IRFU's focus on the women's sevens programme at senior level, at, at elite level. And I wonder if you flip that, Alan, and actually say, what about focusing on that at a, at a more underage level with more kids at a, in a more accessible game, essentially, than, than 15s? Could you essentially have more people picking up a rugby ball and, as a result, more skilled people who, if they want, end up playing full-on rugby union? Yeah, possibly. I think um, all this stuff has to be funded um, on. And, you know, there are a few throughout the pandemic have probably less 25 to 30 people have lost their jobs um going right back to when i played and, and i've said this about um it, my club can william and rugby in the area we we would have had rugby development officers here when i was kind of coming up playing with shannon and monster N- none none coached me or poached me or, or brought me into the system but after that, you know, we would have had different players and there would have been a development officer in the club here in Tipperary Town who would have went around to certain s- schools coaching. And it was his job, essentially. He played rugby. Robbie Campbell and New Zealand are playing with Clan William. That's what he did. And, and you know, he found Tommy O'Donnell in, in a school in care who came then and played rugby in Clan William. And, of course, there's, there's loads more kids who, who probably like rugby 
still play GA in soccer, but there's an opportunity to get him into it. And I think, yeah, I, I think even encouraging kids to play sevens at a, at a younger level, it's something that, that maybe would work. But there's development officers throughout the country. And, and this is something I probably... I, didn't say on, on, on Monday morning about the women's game. There's still a lot of work to be done in the women's game for sure, but there is development officers there. There is structures there, and, and the IRFU have spent money and supported this. Can they do more? Of course. Okay, so I don't want to get into a debate with somebody about that. Um, but the men's game and the women's game, essentially, if you want kids to play sport and you want them to play rugby who when they haven't done it, they're not going to their local club, and you go into a school with a development officer, you, you want them to go out and have fun and enjoy it. There's probably a fear sometimes about the contact and the physicality for kids who are not used to that. But getting them having fun and improving their skills and getting them running with the ball and free-flowing is something that um, may encourage more kids to play. So going right down to the grassroots um, and, and improve... May, like I said, a lot of this stuff is happening, but the question is, how can we make it better? Like, we only have four provinces here, and, and of course the Irish team get lots of criticism and deserve to. They're well-resourced. You know, going to World Cups is disappointing. But, like, we haven't the biggest... Let's be honest, if you're being honest about it, we don't have the biggest pool of players. We're always uh, going to be under pressure to to get to the level where we want to be and, World Cup semi-finals or even going to a final or something like that, particularly after the high of 2018. So we continuously have to work on those resources. And, and the key in, uh, is to that is obviously through the club game and you know trying to replicate maybe the school system, which is very difficult because they're essentially just mini academy after mini academy after mini academy and all the school system. And and maybe that's where they get a little bit of a jump ahead of the other provinces. So yeah. um, more emphasis on the clubs, the rural clubs around Ireland. How do we improve? Um, and they all these guys have been on coaching courses and they have their qualifications to coach the kids. Maybe it's an idea to get a lot of ex-players and try and filter them around to a lot of these clubs and go in and, and take a session of coaching the coaches or give them a little bit of their expertise as a player where you know I could go in and do some line outs and you know someone like, obviously Draco has gone around you know you couldn't get better to probably show guys lines are running and, and some of the, the skills of the catch pass and stuff mightn't be feasible but just improve the coaching of these kids and hopefully then that it just becomes no, more natural to them when they become adults yeah has a knock on alright we didn't get a chance to talk about the rugby this week we'll do that I'm sure uh, on Monday as well Quinny thanks a million Cheers, lads. Thanks. Thanks.